So problem 2.16 is really similar to what we've done before, only this time, instead of a sphere, we're dealing with a cylinder. So in order to find the electric field, we're going to have to divide the electric field into three cases. So the first case is where S, the radial component, is smaller than A. Second is where S is between A and B. And the third when S is larger than B, so outside of the two cylinders here. So once again, we're going to have to use Gauss's law. And we're going to use the same same argument that the charge density, because it's constant, so the electric field is going to be pointing in the radial direction. So if we choose a cylinder as the surface that we're considering for this surface interval, we essentially can change this line into the absolute value of the electric field times the surface area. So times the surface area, and it's going to be equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon. So let's do just that. So for the first case, when s is smaller than a, so the electric field, so I'm going to start from this line, electric field, we need to multiply this by the surface area. So what is the surface area of a certain cylinder that we're going to wrap around? So we need to find the circumference, so it's 2 pi s, so that gives us the circumference of the circle. And then we're going to consider an arbitrary length, so some length l, so times l. So it's going to be a cylinder with a length of l. So that is the surface we're considering, so that is the surface area of the cylinder. And that's going to be equal to the charge density, so that's going to be pi s squared times l times the charge density. So this is the volume times charge density divided by epsilon. So at this point you might find the L to be a little bit strange. It's arbitrary and it actually doesn't really matter what you choose because they cancel out. So in the end you have the absolute value of the electric field is equal to, so the pi's cancel out, one of the s's cancel out, so you get charge density times s divided by 2 epsilon. So the electric field is going to be equal to this pointing in the radial direction. So the second case when s is between a and b. So again we do the same exact thing. So considering an arbitrary surface, so 2 pi s l, that's going to be equal to the charge enclosed. So what is the charge enclosed? That's pi a square. So notice that at this time is a square, not s square, because between A and B, the charge only goes from the center all the way up here. So we don't need to, once we exceed that point, there's no any, there's no more additional charge. So it only goes all the way up to A square. So pi A square L times the charge density divided by epsilon. And so once again, a bit of canceling out we get a square charge density divided by 2 epsilon s. And so once again we see that this is the electric field. So for the third case, when s is larger than b, so by the same argument you have something like this times the surface area, but this time the charge enclosed what is the charge enclosed? It's going to be equal to zero, right? Because if you look back at the diagram, you'll see that <clears throat> there is a surface with negative charge, and the charge is distributed <clears throat> in such a way that it cancels all the charges. It has a total charge equal to the total, uh, so it has a total negative charge equal to the total positive charge inside. So once you consider a surface that's larger than B, essentially the total amount of charge that's going to be wrapped inside that surface is going to be equal to zero because the surface is going to cancel out whatever the positive the inside brings. So in the, in the end this is going to be equal to zero so this is going to be equal to zero. So there we know that this expression is going to be equal to zero. So the electric field outside is going to be equal to zero. So just to summarize what we've obtained. So for the first case, it's going to be equal to rho s 2 epsilon s 
for the second case, it's going to be equal to rel a squared 2 epsilon s. And for the third case, the electric field is going to be equal to 0. So we can, once again, we can try to graph this and see how the electric field changes under this configuration. So this is going to be s. This is going to be the absolute value of e. So first of all, you see that this is a linear function. You have a bunch of constants times s, so it's going to go up in a straight line. And then once it once it reaches a, so this is going to be a, this is going to be b. So once it reaches a, this is going to be something that's proportional to 1 over s. So it's going to go down like this. And then once we reach this point, once we reach b, it's going to drop down abruptly to 0. So this is going to this is what the graph is going to look like. So this is the answer. There you have it.